So I'm taking one of my old projects, this low profile modern coffee table. I was basically bored of it and on the verge of throwing it out. But then I got this idea that I could reuse it for this project. I'm gonna show you how you can create this one of a kind penny table. And after many years of sitting on this idea, it's time to make it happen. Let's do this. I won't tell you to go back and watch that entire video, but I'll give you a rundown on what I did. This table was made from less than a single sheet of plywood. Most of the cuts were made on a table saw. I wanted to keep a clean edge, so I put a 4 to 5 miter on these. I also cut some small scraps to strengthen a miter from the inside. Then I glued and nailed the small pieces into wooden brackets. As you can see, pretty simple, all the parts used in this project. In each corner, I added two brackets. Then I screwed the brackets into the sides, followed by a few brad nails into the miter joints. Next, I'll attach these small squares in the corner as the base for the feet. And finally, a little support under the base. Next, I filled the joint with some wood filler and sanded it down. And a fresh coat of white paint will give this thing a nice modern feel. I added some fabric to the bottom and installed the feet of my choice. And just like that we have a nice little modern table, which brings us to where we are today. Years later, I took the same table, gave it a light sand, and put a fresh coat of epoxy on it. Well, I thought I hit record while I was doing the pouring, that didn't happen so all you get to see is the drip from the table. I gave the table enough time to harden, clean up that mess, and here we are. This is what a fun start where well, I'm gonna take a bunch of pennies. I did try to clean them up a little bit and I just figured, ah, you know what? We're just gonna keep them as is. The basic concept here is to apply a little glue, stick them on a table and just keep doing this over and over and over again. To adhere to pennies, I looked at a wide range of glue products and I ultimately settled on crazy glue. In a few seconds, these things would stick. So you gotta make sure you get them in the right spot and I advise paying attention because if you don't get them in the right spot, it's gonna be hard to pry these up. I'm gonna start off by keeping the pennies tight together and as I extend this out, I'll make it look fragmented towards the edge. This is as far as I'm willing to go with all the pennies being as tight as possible. And at some point here, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to just throw the pennies on the table in a sense and just spread them out to try to accomplish the look that I'm hoping for. The goal is to try and make the pennies look as if it was naturally breaking or pulling itself apart. Now I don't feel confident that I can just eyeball this and glue these things on one by one into the look that I'm hoping for. So the best thing I think to do here is to lay them out, space them as needed, and then come back, pick them up one by one and glue them back down. I'm quite happy with the top of the table so far, so I'm gonna flip it on its side and then continue to add more pennies there. The idea is to follow the design on the top, but in the opposite direction. On the short side of this table, I decided to just fill this entire area here with pennies and just keep it all compact and tight. In order to get a feel for how the resin would interact with the pennies on the table on all sides, I needed to mix up some epoxy. For starters, I mixed up 48 ounces. Now I'm gonna take the resin and cover the entire table. 
as I was making this pour, I learned a couple things. This first pour was absolutely necessary, but it's not the only pouring style I'm going to have to use on this project. For starters, if I were to make all the pour on the top and let it roll down the side, that would take an insane amount of epoxy because most of it would just drip off. The top layers would likely build up, but the ones on the side will stretch thin. The thinner they stretch, the harder it's going to be to cover up the pennies, which require more and more epoxy. The best way to combat this is to build up layers on each sides. After allowing the epoxy to harden, I'm going to take the router and route off the dry drips. It's best to scrape the drips off about an hour after the first pour, that way you don't have to deal with this stuff later. Cutting these off can get messy, but for me it was the fastest way to do it. In order to build up the sides, I need to assemble a mold around it. This took some time to assemble, but once I got it all together, I needed to make sure that it didn't spring a leak once the epoxy is poured. Taking a closer look at the side, you can see that the resin didn't completely cover the pennies. Building up the side this way seems to be the most cost effective approach. Once it's poured into the mold, all that's needed here is to spread it around. Often you can use the torch to get rid of the bubbles, but with the tape in place, that's not a good recipe for heat. So I'll have to use some alcohol to motivate the bubbles to disappear. I did spring a leak in the corner, which I took some tissue paper, taped that into place and that took care of it. And I also hung around just to make sure no leak was sprung. And once I felt confident, I took off. After about four hours, I returned to remove the mold. And the next day I poured the other side and so on. At this point, I've built the layers out on the sides. Now I'll take some sandpaper, 320 grit, and then I'll sand the entire top, the sides, and try to round over the corners. Once I'm done sanding, I'll take some soapy water and wash this off. Let that dry, then I'll take some alcohol, spray it, and wipe it down. I'll let it air dry as I get ready for the final pour. Finally, I'll cover the entire table with the resin, take a brush, and then spread it around. Finally, I'll take a torch and go over the entire table. I struggled to figure out the type of feet I wanted to put on this table. I was actually going to go with these ones that I took off of a sofa. And although they could have worked, I was not in love with them. At least not for this table. I ended up sitting the table on a bucket to get a perspective of it to see how it would look and that's where the idea came about to give it a floating look. So instead of the feet, I decided to build a base. I'm just going to make a simple rectangular base and just use brad nails and wood glue to hold it all together. I checked to make sure the box was squared and everything looks good. So now I'll add some braces on the inside. This way I can attach the base to the table. Now I'm gonna apply some gloss paint on this base and this could be any color because it's gonna be covered up. I just needed to have a little sheen to it. I'm gonna take this contact paper that I had on hand and wrap this base with it. What's nice about this is not only can you feel the raised texture on it, but it has a nice look to it. Instead of one solid color, the design gives it some depth.
With the base complete, I'll locate some screws long enough to go through the base and into the table. I'm gonna center this up, drive the screws in and remove it so I can put the final touches on this table. Since the table is gonna have a floating look to it, I couldn't pass up the chance to add some LEDs. You can find LED strips with battery packs all over. I wasn't prepared to do it on this project, so I'm gonna take some of the things that I already have and make it work, but I'll link some battery powered strips down in the description. I'm gonna place the roll of lights going around the bottom perimeter of the table. Now I don't want this facing the ground cause you'll likely see the bulbs. But facing the light in like this would likely lose some of the spread, but I'm okay with that because I don't need to light up a rug or a floor. I just want a subtle light coming from under the table. And with this, I think we can accomplish that. With the LED strip connected directly to the raw wood, over time it's likely this would detach on its own. But one way around that is to run a small bead of hot glue alongside the strip. I've had good luck with this approach in the past. I'm gonna take this battery pack that spit out 12 volt, which is enough to power the controller that would then control the lights. This controller can be controlled by Wi-Fi or the remote. For the infrared receiver, I need to position this so I can hit it with the remote. This worked as expected, so all I need to do now is reinstall the base. Just in case there may be any questions on the table tilting, let's give it a quick test. First, I put 40 pounds at the very edge and the table seems to sit just fine. Now, if I kick that up to 50 pounds, you'll see the table tilting. This happens to be the weakest side of the table. As you can see, the long side of the table seems to hold the 50 pounds a lot better, but it's still possible to tilt. Worst case, if you're intrigued by this project, want to make it for yourself and you have little toddlers and they climb on top of it, just assume that it will tilt over. So be mindful of what you put on there. A way to combat this is make the base weighted. Consider filling it with sand and close it up. 